What's up everyone? Welcome back to CNC Auto Works. Hope everybody's having a fantastic day. I know I got the old F-150 build out here again, but I've had uh, several guys asking me what it all took to convert this thing from the EFI to the carburetor. And to be honest, uh, I thought it was going to be a lot worse than it really was. It was uh, really pretty much just straightforward. But uh, how I started is uh, I went ahead and ordered up everything I was going to need. Uh, intake, distributor, and a carburetor. And uh, I had ordered uh, this throttle bracket. This truck actually runs uh, AOD. A uh, little bit newer trucks have uh, AODE or electronic transmission. And that's a little bit more involved. I really don't know anything about that except for you got to rig up a TPS sensor on this side of the carburetor. But I got lucky. I had the AOD. I didn't have to fart with that. But I went ahead and took all the stock EFI stuff off that I didn't need. Upper plenum, throttle body, uh, air box, air hoses, all the vacuum canisters. It really cleaned this thing up underneath the hood. And then I went ahead and bolted down the new intake, put the carburetor on, uh, addressed all the throttle brackets, uh, adjusted the TV cable, uh, pulled the stock distributor out, and went ahead and threw the HEI in. On this uh, throttle bracket, is actually for a Chevrolet with the 700R4. The AOD cable fits right in there, but I did have to take a die grinder and massage the uh, throttle cable a little bit because Chevrolet square and the Ford is round. And by the, when I got all that done, I moved on to the fuel side of things. I got a Holly uh, carburetor fuel pressure regulator, which is max of like nine PSI. And I went ahead and mounted that on the firewall. You can see back here. And before I went ahead and scrapped all the stock intake, I went ahead and cut the two pieces off of the, where the fuel hoses run into the uh, fuel rails. I cut them off and they actually have like a stock style flare on them. And I went ahead and just popped them back on the hoses. And then I got some uh, fuel injection hose and uh, slid over that and just hose clamped them. And then I got some uh, 3 8 bar fittings. You can see there on the right side, that's the fuel feed from the tank. The one coming out of the bottom is actually the bypass. And the one on the left goes to the carburetor. I had a fuel pressure gauge on here, but it started leaking, so I took it back off. I'm right at six pounds right now, or when the gauge was on there, it was reading six pounds. But I still got all the stock fuel pumps in the tank. And, uh, I figured out how to make them run next and I haven't had a problem with how I did that but what I did is I just came over here to this power distribution box and I pulled the relay out the fuel pump relay out and I just jumped it this is the keyed on ignition on this side and this is the feed that goes to the fuel pump, turn it on. So every time you turn on the key now, it just, the pump just runs. And after I got tackled all that, I wound up uh, tearing into this wiring harness. Uh, went ahead and pulled the whole harness off and I weeded through everything. And I actually wound up cutting a bunch of stuff out. I cut this whole rat nest here out. It's all the injector wire, the TPS sensor, auto air control. Uh, I can't even think what else. EGR. I mean, it's basically everything that ran stuff. The coil. All I left on the... Uh, actual harness is I cut it down to the temp sending unit that goes in the intake 
the oil pressure sending unit that goes on the side of the block by the oil filter. I left the uh, AC compressor because it's hot here in Texas. I wanted to have my AC still. And I wound up leaving the uh, wiring harness that ran to the stock distributor because I still wanted to hook up the factory tech and I needed a hot wire, hot ignition wire to actually run this uh, HEI distributor. But this is all I got left of the uh, actual wiring harness. It's basically six wires. Stops right here. Got a hot wire that runs around here to the distributor. Like I said, the temp sender, whole pressure sender, and the air conditioner. And that's all I got left. The uh, alternator and the charging system was actually on a separate harness over here. So it all stayed the same and it still does charge. But basically that's everything it took to go ahead and carburetor this thing. And then another guy asked me, he said, I bet every warning light's on on the dash. And the only thing that's on is the check engine light. And uh, it was actually on before I even did the swap because of the EGR and the O2. And that's another thing I cut out of the harness with the O2 and just all that mess. I got rid of all that mess. It cleaned everything up a lot better. It looks a lot better. And it don't look so busy under the hood. And everything actually turned out nice. It runs good. I haven't had any problems. I might eventually uh, try to wire the fuel pump a little differently. But I haven't had anything get hot or act funny yet. It just leaves the pump running all the time, which it bypasses. Uh, both tanks actually still do work front and back. All the switches inside still work. But that's basically all it takes, guys. And then just if you ever do do this walk, make sure you get... Uh, your TV cable adjusted right so you don't burn up the transmission. That's probably the biggest key thing. And when you do order your carburetor for the swap, there's a additional little bracket here that you gotta buy. It's like a correction bracket for the throw on the uh, TV cable. And got it from Summit for maybe like 18 bucks or something. But it, it has the right amount of throw that uh, the TV cable, kick down cable needs. But hopefully uh, this kind of helps somebody get a better idea of what it takes to go ahead and swap out from EFI to carburetor. I think I've kind of went over everything that I did and that's basically all it took was just uh, them few minor little things. I really didn't have to buy nothing too crazy or out of the ordinary, just a distributor, carburetor, you know, pressure regulator, just to knock down the pressure from those stock pumps. You could definitely go a different way on that if you needed to or wanted to. You could even go back to the, the old mechanical if you actually had the timing cover to go to mechanical. And then you wouldn't have to worry about the, the factory pumps. I was trying to keep it as factory as possible. Like I say, all my instrument cluster still works. My tech, my speedometer, oil pressure, temp, uh, amp gauge, and fuel gauge all still work perfectly. Mm. The one thing that I did not hook back up is my cruise control. And that's just because it was getting too messy up in here, bunched up. And uh, mine actually runs off vacuum and I didn't want to tap into the vacuum and make it any busier than it had to be because this is just going to be kind of like a toy for me. I'm not going to be driving it on the highway or long distances or nothing like that. So I really didn't need to cruise. But hopefully this helps somebody figure it out. And I think that's going to be it for this video, guys. I think I went over everything. So until next time, we'll catch you later.